Thank you, Father. Anointing for exploit. Anointing for exploit. Look at the eye of your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants to do mighty things through you. God is not interested in the ordinary. Praise God. You can see how God defended us so mightily. When God spoke his word to us in the month of October, preserved by his glory. Look at how the enemy raised his ugly head. Look at all the near misses and accidents. And God brought out his people unscathed. Amen. Preserved by his what? Glory. Listen, every time the word of God goes out, there is something it will address. It has to address. And his word does not go back to him empty unless it has performed that which he sent it. This month is our month of I am an instrument of his praise. How many of you are observing the one hour of praise in your family? Can you raise your hand and wave it to heaven? I know not many of you. Not many of you. You see, when you don't have personal encounter, Christianity would be like a mystery. It would be like a story. When you have had a personal encounter, you will know how to follow instructions. Because one time, through your personal and individual involvement with God, you will have seen God manifest. You will know how to take it up upon yourself. I'm seeing people that are breaking forth with testimonies unbelievable. Through this, I've said it several years. God did not create you to pray. He created you for his praise. It's a choice. Choose what you want. I'm living a praiseful life and I've never regretted. Anointing for exploit. Last week we said anointing manifests in the form of wisdom. So wisdom is very, very key for exploits. Anointing manifests in form of wisdom. And so we said this wisdom can be imparted. This wisdom can be acquired. When you get closer to the carrier, For if anointing does not manifest in form of wisdom, it will face limitation. It will not be able to produce results. Yet, the anointing is there. If a man has money and he does not have wisdom, we said, even a blind man will know that he's a fool. Even his great man will know he's a fool. Praise God. Anointing for exploit manifests in the form of power. Somebody say power. Now, many of us are used to the aspect of power when it comes to the anointing. Why? Because an the anointing is synonymous to what? Power. So everybody understand that when you say anointing, you are talking about the power of God at work. Not many understand that this same anointing manifests as wisdom. Also, we have to understand that this power is not just power. This power manifests in three ways. Somebody say three ways. This power manifests as a spiritual power. Somebody say spiritual. It manifests as a spiritual power. This anointing also manifests as manpower. Somebody say manpower. Somebody say manpower. Manpower or human resources. Manpower or what? Human resources. 
So God anoints you. That and the anointing is like sugar. It draws men. Amen. Anointing is what? Like sugar. It draws men like ants. So it's not just power. It has capacity to draw manpower. Human resources. This anointing for exploits, we say it manifests as power. And power, one, spiritual power, manpower or human resources, and three, it manifests as what? Financial power. Somebody say financial power. <laughs> now, let me tell you, anybody that tells you to ignore financial power or ignore finances or tell you that prosperity is not a gospel of Christ, they are telling you to abandon your destiny. Amen. They are telling you to do what? Abandon your destiny. Why? Because without finances, there is absolutely nothing you can do. There is absolutely nothing you will be able to do. The reason why some people do not go to school is because of what? Financial power. The reason why some people cannot even learn work is because of what? Financial power. The reason why some children die in the hand of their parents is what? Financial power. Uh, he's sick. They know. He's supposed to be treated. They know. They keep managing until it gets worse. God is not just addressing your spiritual life, your human life, but also your financial power. Now, power manifests in this threefold. However, we must understand that the spiritual power is the router to all form of the other power. Amen. The spiritual power is the router. That means is the one that leads you into what? The man power or human resources. Is the one that leads you into financial power. Is the router. You can't afford to go with just one and neglect the other. You can't afford to go with just one and what? Neglect the other. Imagine having people like this and there is no microphone to speak. You can't afford to go with one and leave the other. But we must understand that it is the spiritual power that is the router to the others. That means... First of all, you must work on the spiritual aspect so that you can have power with men and power to keep your finances alive. Amen. Shout fire. fire. In John chapter 6 and verse 44. John chapter 6 verse 44. John 6 44. Is somebody reading? Please use the mic. I need two people who will be reading for me there quickly. Yes. Yes. No man can come to me. No man can come to me. Except the Father. Except the Father. Which has sent me. Which has sent me. Draw him. Draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him up at the last day. So no man can come to me except the Father draw him. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. It said, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. He directed it even as he directed the course of the rivers. Man power is the reason why many cannot fulfill their destiny. Man power. No matter how spiritually endowed you are, 
Your destiny must be anchored around the right men. <laughs> no matter how spiritually endowed you are, your destiny must be anchored around who? The right men or less. You, it will just be swept away. It will just be washed away. No matter how endowed you are, your destiny must anchor around the right men. It must anchor around the right wife, the right husband, the right pastor, the right who? The right mentor. The right mentor. The right teacher. If not, when you are a prophet and you are under a teacher, you will start behaving like a teacher. <laughs> you are an evangelist. You are under a prophet. Before you know, you, you have ministry conversion. Unless it has, it carries what you are looking for. When Jesus was about to start his ministry in Matthew chapter 4, in Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 20, Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 20, Jesus went to the mountain. Many people thought that Jesus went to pray, to have power with God. This is the Son of God. If it was so much about power, then I don't think the devil was supposed to come to him inside his fasting and his prayer. But the Bible said the devil came to him when he was hungry. How can the devil came to him when he was hungry and he was fasting and praying? We should believe that he has spiritual power. That devil was not supposed to get close to him. So it was not just about spiritual power. And coming down from the mountain, the first work Jesus did was what? He met those who his destiny were anchored around them. Matthew chapter 4, read for me. Yes. If you read the account of Matthew, Jesus was just coming down from the mountain. Yes. And Jesus, Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother. They were casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. For they were fishers. And he said unto them, Amen. Follow me. Amen. And I will make you fishers of men. Praise God. Destiny will miss road if you miss the right people. Many people have been successful before. Who brought them down? Who brought them down? His people. In Matthew 16 and 16 to 18, he met Peter. He met Peter. For you to know how important this Peter is to the destiny of Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. I don't know why he needs a man. He should have been able to fulfill his destiny all by himself. Yes, 16, 16 to 18. And Simon Peter answered Jesus and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It was, he gave an affirmation to who Jesus was, even when all others in the fellowship were still doubting his personality. They were still doubting who he was. But this man said, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. God. Look, if you don't meet people who believe you, you amount to nothing. It takes people to believe you before you fulfill your destiny.
there are those who stand up, stand up. There are those who have what you are looking for, but just because they don't believe you, just because they don't believe you, they will not help you. There are those who don't have what you are looking for, but because they believe you, they will lay down their own project and invest on you. Somebody lay your hand on your head and say, Father, Father. help me to meet those who believe me. Pray that prayer with all urgency. This little anointing I carry, help me to meet those who believe. Who are not going to wait for me. To keep proving myself every Sunday. <laughs> To keep proving myself every day before they know he's a true man of God. Before they know that this one will be successful. Help me to meet those who believe me. If you cannot pray, you cannot move forward. This is an arena of power and spirituality. Your, your deliverance is in your mouth. Help me to meet those who believe me. There is no man that amount to anything without meeting a man that believe him. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Well, if you pray that prayer, good for you. If you do not pray, good for you. If you are wise, you write it down. The son of the living God. Yes. And Jesus answered and said. Jesus answered and said. Blessed art thou. Blessed art thou. Simon. Simon. Yes. For flesh and blood hath not flesh revealed. Flesh and blood. Did it not he reveal this thing to you? It is not flesh and blood that spoke to you just For now. My father which is in heaven. My father which is in heaven. Yes. And I say unto thee. I say unto thee. That thou art Peter. Thou art Peter. And unto this rock. And unto this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against shall it. Shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus made a comment there that some people have taken for something else. He said, Upon unto this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. So they believe that Jesus built his church upon Peter. No. Jesus did not build his church upon Peter. Jesus built his church upon the confession that he is the son of God. Because some people will say, Saint Peter. That is why Jesus built upon his church upon, upon him. No. It was built on revelation. It was built on what? A monumental revelation of Jesus Christ came from the first disciple he located while coming from the mountain of spiritual empowerment. A monumental revelation of Jesus Christ. A monumental revelation upon which the fulcrum of his ministry was anchored came out from the first man he met coming down from the mountain of empowerment. Listen to me. If all your spirituality does not lead you to right people, you are still in trouble. All your praying, if, it, if you are still crying that it is evil people in the land, evil people, listen, why can't you see good people? If everybody is evil, then you are part of them. Shot fire. fire. I spoke to my leg many years ago. I told my, when I want to go out, I will tell myself, where are you going to? It is better you stay indoor than for you to go out meaninglessly. I started speaking to my leg. I said, this leg, this land, there are good people in this land. 
take me to them. I don't need multitude. I just need one person. There is somebody that will affect me for good. Because I discovered I stayed in a particular area for more than five years. And I discovered that all the people I have as friends, they are people I am better than. Listen, check yourself. If the people around you, you are better than them. The day calamity and problem will come. You will pray. It will be like heaven did not answer. When God wants to answer prayer, he looks for the men around you. Hey, the reason why some of you did not receive help is because there is nobody around you. And it is not because there was nobody. You have been careless. You have been careless with relationship. You have been careless with who you meet. You have not spoken to your life. And you did not understand that your destiny is, con is anchored to some people. When God wants to answer a man, he will look for men. He will check those around you. Then he will push one like this. Who are those around you? All your fasting and praying must lead you into the right standing with men and with God. It must lead you into right standing with men and with God. Many care about their relationship with God and they underestimate their relationship with men. You will suffer again. <laughs> Am I speaking something to you? I'm telling you the reason why men remain ordinary. Why glory seems as if it has evaded some life and some destinies. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So let that king be Pharaoh. Let that man be, be Potiphar. It is better you have him than not to have him. There are many things that God will never start with you unless the right men are in place. Look at the eyes of your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants to start something new with you. But until the right men come around you, it can never start. Until the right husband, until the right friend, until the right neighbor, until the right brother. Many things God wants to start with you. Until the right men are around you, you will, you will not do anything. You can pray heaven to heart. They will take you to heaven and come back. You will still be there. Before this ministry started, by the grace of God, I have a habit of going to the camp. Gospel camp in Yenashash. And when I go there, I go there almost every day, a week. Every day, I just go there. Once I close from work, I go. Once I'm off duty, you won't see me in the house. I don't even talk to my wife. I stay at home just once every week. Only one day. I will just go from morning to evening, from morning to evening, like that. Once I'm not at work, I'm in the camp. What am I doing? I don't know. I was not asking God for anything. I was not asking God to bless me. Everyone has it in record. I didn't ask God to bless me. I was just asking for the presence of God. The presence of God. I was there in the camp one day when they brought somebody from Redeem. Some pastor had sent him to me. And by the grace of God, the case was even a state case. Fashola was the one that made that man to be arrested. He was put in the prison at Krikri. They have done everything to bring him out. Nothing worked. And when they just came, I was wearing a jean and a shirt and one of the two lawyers followed them and was looking at me and said, you see this, this person, they say we should come and see. The Holy Spirit said, look, that woman is doubting you. Then 
when I look at her, I say, Evelyn is giving you a headache. Hey! I say, okay, you have believed now. <laughs> I look at the second lawyer. I say, lawyer, I'm seeing empty end. I'm seeing empty end. Your husband has something to do with land. And this man is going to be a multi-millionaire through land. He shouted and said, hey, this is true. My husband is just running for a project with empty end to be marking spots where they will be putting their mask. I said, okay, case closed. No more doubt. Come. By the grace of God, this man was released under two ways. Listen to me. I'm trying to bring out something for you to understand. I never knew these people, how rich they were, how influential they were. And I never asked them for a dime. But believe you me, one year after I met them, one year after I met them, the purpose for which I met them was fulfilled. Because when we went there to start ministry, there was no place. There was only instruction, go and start. Some people's problem that you are busy solving is the key to your own answer. So if you, we only stay with people because their hand is full of oil, but you will soon lack if you will stay with people because there is extra meat to eat from them, let me tell you, you will be beggarly. Many things God will start with you. Unless the right people are in place, it will never start. Today you are praying for a husband. Is somebody that will connect you to that husband. It may be a friend's name you will go to. <laughs> the coercion and the continuity of Jesus' ministry depended on Peter. The coercion and continuity of the ministry of Christ depended on Peter. There are many people, the first person that entered their life has destroyed them. The first relationship. The first relationship. The people they live with. The church they entered. The Babalawo they visited. In John chapter 21 and verse 14 to 17... After our resurrection, Jesus was speaking to Peter again. John, is somebody reading there for me? 21, yes. Verse, yes. verse 14. 14 through 17. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. The third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. After he was risen from the dead. So when they had died... When the what? They had dined. They have dined. They've Je eaten. Jesus said to Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon Peter. Simon, son of Jonas. Simon, son of Jonas. Love thou me more than this. Love thou me more than this. He said unto him, Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Thou knowest I love thee. Thou knowest I love you. He said unto him, Feed my lamb. Feed my lamb. He said to him again the second time. He said to him the second time. Simon, son of Jonas. Simon, son of Jonas. Love it thou me. Love it thou me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord. He said, Yea, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. Thou knowest that I love he thee. He said unto him. He said unto him. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time. The third time. Simon, son of Jonas. Yes. Love it thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. Uh -huh. Love it thou me. Yes. And he said unto him, Love. Thou knowest all things. All things. Thou knowest that I love thee. I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Jesus feed said unto him, my sheep. Feed my sheep. The continuity of Jesus' ministry depended on the first disciple he met.
There are people that have left you. They can cause you a breakdown. Be careful with the people God brings around you. The people you have will determine the honor you have. The people that you have will what? Determine the honor you have. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 28. Proverbs 14 and verse 28. The people you have, don't take, look, God is very interested in your influence and your affluence. Amen. If God give you an office, no matter how small it is, like a cubicle, don't mind. God place you there for a reason. He's interested in your influence and what? Your affluence. Your kingdom, the kingdom of God cannot be expanded when Christians don't have influence. Imagine that all over... Today, in Nigeria, why are we crying? All the big, big positions, are they not northerners? Not only northerners, Muslims. All the oil well in the southeast, are they not possessed by northerners? The top, top oil wells. The people you have will determine the honor you have. What is making the north right in Nigeria today? They say they are more in number. So if you are just saying, I, 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 I like to do on my own, continue. Your children will come and eat on day, day on your own. They will continue from there. When they look at, uh -uh, who will our father even run to? When you are carrying your karanga and go, they want to share invitation. The, nobody can bring five nera. You did not build anybody. What, what kind of life is this? You did not affect somebody. I say, if not for this man, I won't be here. Yes. Proverbs 14, 28. 28. In the multitude of people. In the multitude of people. Is the king's honor. In is the king's honor. Say, I'm a king. I'm a king. So when you are a king and a queen and you lack people, you have no honor. Your honor will be limited. See, I, these are not my words. Don't blame me. Oh. This is what the Bible said. And this is the truth. But the Bible said, even multitude followed Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Multitude followed him. In this is my Father glorified that ye will bear much fruit. That your life will touch many people. Not just your children. Yes. But in the want of people. In the want of the people. Is the destruction of the, the prince. king will be the prince will be destroyed because he lacked people. The honor of the king is in the people that he has. The prince will be destroyed because he lacked people. Imagine you have ten. See, let me let you know. The quality of people you have also matters, not just the people. God will help us. The things you, you will easily do easily, the things you will do easily with the right people around you, you may never be able to achieve it. Even if you have money. So don't stress financial power above manpower or human resources. Amen. Don't stress financial power above human resources or manpower. 
There are many things you will do easily without money because you have the right people. Anointing manifests in the form of human resources. The Bible said in 2 Samuel chapter 2, 2 Samuel 23, 2 Samuel 23, when you read from verse 8 to 39, 2 Samuel 23, from 8 to 39, in verse 39, the Bible said the number of them was 37, 37 valiant men, 37 valiant men. So this man had 37 men that he can count on. He had what? 37 men that he can count on. Look at your neighbors and say, how many people can you count on? And you are a king. David was a king. The priesthood of David is on us. In us. He had 37 men. Men who were ready to lay down their life because David wanted to drink water. He wanted to drink water. He said, don't worry, they blocked that place. We will go and fetch that water. He said, but king, don't worry. We are going. They laid down. It's not because he wanted to eat. Because he wanted to drink water. They laid down their life. See, if you have not seen men go extra mile for you, you need to cry out to God. There are those who will go extra mile for you to change position. They will go extra mile. Inconvenience themselves to see that you become a success. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, 1 Samuel 22 and verse 2, the Bible also made us that understand that apart from 37 valiant men, David had 400 men. Another 400 apart from the 37 that he can count on. That this one they will do what I will do if I'm not here. Put your hand on your head again and say, Father, position my destiny among the right people. If you can pray that prayer well, oh, I don't know if you'll be sitting and praying it. I don't know if you are in one place because you don't have somebody. You have God, but you don't have people. <laughs> Position my life among the right people. Not people will eat me and be blowing me. Uh -huh. Pray, 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 pray. There is power in your word. Don't close your mouth. Prayer is not thinking. You are not asked to think. You are asked to pray. Position me among the right people. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Have your seat before the Lord. This man that David had, the Bible recorded that David never lost a battle. David never lost what? A battle. Is it because of how strong he is? It's because of the men he had. It's because of who? The men he had. There are many lost battles. There are some battles that you have faced shame, that you were not supposed to face shame. It's because you lack people. God was not in that shame. God was not the one who orchestrated it, it's because you lack people. 
there was no anointing to attract the right people into your life. And even if your anointing attracted them, your character did not keep them. Somebody said, Pastor, you are preaching right. Even if the anointing attract the right people, your character must keep them. Or else, you will suffer again. The manpower or the human resources around you will determine what is achievable. It is not just the standard you set. It is not just the what? The standard. You can have a lot of standard. Listen to me. All these companies, why, why are they employing people? You will see they are buying director from another company. They will look at a small company and they will go and check their report, their accounts for the year. And they will say, ah, how can this company make this kind of money than us? despite all that we have in the market. No. They will go to the director of that company and buy him to their company. Then all the draconian rule, all the laws, all the slavery method he used to slice and ensure that money did not come out from that company. Everything returned to shareholder. He will not come and use it for them then the people will be groaning. One person doing 10 people's work. <laughs> Listen to me. Whatever you achieve will be dependent on the people around you. When you place a shark inside a disc, a petri dish, it will only grow one inch. When you know a shark, how long a shark is, Put him inside a petri dish and be feeding it. It will only grow one inch. But put that same shark in the sea. You, you will, it will not only grow, it will eat you if you are not careful. You will be a different woman today if you are in the US. Eh, listen to me. What? One eight hours work in US is Nigeria one month, one month salary. Eight hours in US, you will earn at least 33,000 for eight hours. At least is small for eight hours. You are if you convert the dollar to naira. Listen, the money may not be that big in the economy, but if you convert, you know where you are coming from. So the person that is in America is one day is equal to 30 days of Nigeria. Arek Beshola was saying something recently. He said what prisoners are earning in America is more than what Nigeria workers are earning per month. It's a protective situation. No matter the standard you set, it's the people around you that will determine if your goal will be achievable or not. Or they will frustrate it. When people have small mind, they will quickly destroy you who is thinking of something extraordinary because their mind can never carry it. Their mind can never carry it. When you are working with anybody, don't believe you are helping him. Just believe you are building yourself. Believe that you are building yourself. If you refuse to be built, you will remain the same. You will remain in the same class. How much you are built will determine how much will be usable.
when God wants to change your life, he starts changing the kind of people around you. There is no way God will change the life of any man without changing the people around him. There is no way. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 19, when this man who was a killer, a persecutor of the children of God, when God wanted to change his life, he started to change the people around him immediately. Acts chapter 9 and verse 19. So when you are crying, my father, my God, change my life. Start looking at the people around you. If they are not changing, the change is not yet come. My father, my maker, change my destiny. It is the people around you that will change it. Is they are the one you will use. When God wants to change the destiny of a man, he starts changing the people around him. Yes, Act 19, Act chapter 9, 19. When he had received meat, he was strengthened. Saul was certain days with the disciples which were at where? Damascus. At Damascus. He was now with the disciples. He was no longer with the army that he has taken from Jerusalem to go and destroy. And God started changing the people around him. Jesus had the 12 disciples. Jesus also had the 70. Jesus also had the 120. Amen. He had the 12. He had the 70. He had the 120. Life is in faces and men are in sizes. God is going to bring many kind of men around you for a purpose. That purpose is for you to touch their destiny. When this ministry started, even when there was no money to buy fuel, sometimes I would stand on the pulpit, I would look at the people, <laughs> and I would say, even if you say, come and sow 500 naira, there's no money for fuel. Where will the 500 drop from? You know, the Lord said to me, he said, look, if this destiny cannot change under your ministration, he said, those whose destiny are changed will never find you. When I was fasting and fainting, it was for a reason. I will not say, is it just these people? I beg it. There they go. <laughs> I will have remained the same. If the one man in one room, if his destiny does not change to two rooms, the man who is already in two rooms will not find you. Don't let all your eyes be on the financial power. You need the right people. And destiny begins to change. How do we assess this change of destiny through the right manpower? How do we assess it? Somebody tell your neighbor, say, please God. It's very simple. Please God. When you start making sure that your life is about pleasing God. When you start making sure that your life is about pleasing God. <laughs> Jesus, at the point of baptism, I said baptism is to show the Son of God. Amen? Either water baptism or baptism by the Holy Ghost. It is to show the sons of God. Eh? Because it gave, uh, to them that believe it, it gave what power to become the sons of God. 
And the Bible says, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So, Holy Ghost baptism is to raise sons of God. Water baptism is to show the sons of God. And when the Son of God was shown, God himself said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am very pleased. He said what? Hear ye him. When you please God, men will begin to hear you. For the art of the king is in the hands of the Lord. He directed it even as he directed the course of the rivers. Men will begin to hear you. When you begin to please God. Men will begin to hear you. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7, the Bible also said, If a man's way, or when a man's way pleases the Lord. When a man's way pleases who? The Lord. He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So enemies are forced into compulsory, compulsory, peaceful living. They want to eat you. They want to swallow, but they are forced into a compulsory, peaceful living with you. We are in the midst of enemies and yet thriving. How? Why? How are they doing it? They can't understand. Very simple. Number two is that you must have a genuine heart to help people. Don't have a mind of milking people. Have a genuine heart of helping people. A genuine heart to be a destiny changer. Don't just pass by without having a, a sympathy or having a touch. You know, due to the kind of Christianity we have today, you have never prayed for your neighbor to repent. But you are praying for your enemy to die. They won't die. They will not die. Because that person, even though it's Boko Haram, God loved that person. The enemy is not the flesh. The enemy is a spirit and is the devil. That person may have submitted himself to the devil. And the devil is using him very well. You have never prayed for that person. You have never fasted that person. Repent. And you are saying he should die. He won't die. Send, send pigeon to them. Let them send snake to you. And see if God will not rise. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 33 to 38. A genuine act to help. Luke chapter 6, 33 to 38. You know... When we want to collect money from people, we know how to use this scripture very well. Luke chapter 6 and 33 to 38. If you do good to them, we do good to you. We do good to you. What thanks have ye? What huh? thanks have ye? Yes. For sinners also do even the same. Uh -huh. And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive. If you lend to those whom you hope to receive what from. What thanks have ye? Uh -huh. For sinners also lend to sinners. To receive sinners as lend much, to sinners. Uh, to receive as much gain. Yes. But love ye your enemies. Love ye your enemies. And do good and lend. I'm not the one who wrote this scripture. He said, love ye your enemy. And, yes. And do good. Do good. And lend. And what? L and lend. And lend. Hoping for nothing again. Hoping for nothing again. And so the day you are helping that person, don't think of the person is coming to lie down in front of your door the next day. To say thank you. If he does good, if he doesn't, leave him. I get somebody came to the house recently and he was he want to travel this, this, and something has done, this something has done, that something has ah, Pastor, you gave me a prophecy, and the prophecy has come to be fulfilled like fire. He came to the house early in the morning. And I said, Okay, there's no money with me, or the money that is with me now is uh, just some change. But I'm gonna give you. 
I gave this young man and he traveled. If the wife see me now, the wife used to dodge me. <laughs> but when I say, why are you dodging me? If he see me now, he will dodge. And I've seen her twice. He dodge. For what? <laughs> Don't wait for somebody to come and tell you. Th if that is how we enter into bitterness. That is how we enter into what? Bitterness. Somebody was here. I look at her. I said, where's your, where's your only daughter? Your first daughter. This girl is pregnant. This girl has taken 20 tablets. And these 20 tablets have destroyed the baby in the womb. The woman shouted. He ran and called the daughter. They called the daughter, finish and come. Ah, is it true? He said, yes. You want to kill me? They had to go to a doctor and evacuate. In evacuating, they did not have money. They still came back to me. That gave them message. Am I the one that impregnated her? I gave them money. Since that day, they've not come to say thank you. They've not called me once to say, Pastor, thank you. <laughs> but you will you say because this person do like this, that one do like no. Thank you on the phone. I've not heard it. When you do good, remove your eyes and face your God. If not, devil is very, very cunning. You will enter into bitterness. You will soon be regretting. I've done this. I've done that. Either in the house of God, you are not helping the pastor. You are doing it for God. Either in your family, you are not doing it for your brother. You are doing it for God. a genuine heart to help. Yes. And your reward shall be great. Your reward shall be what? Great. And you shall be the children of the highest. You shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Yes, God is kind to the evil man and the unthankful. So that is how to be like God. Somebody say be like God. Be like God. You are a God. Number three, to step into a new level of human power, human resources, manpower. You must know that your life depends on what you have to offer. To have the right people around you, your life depends on what you can offer, not what you can get from people. People are not going to change around you because your desire of what you want to get from them increase. People are going to change around you because what you have to offer is increasing. I, I don't know if you are getting me. You used to sell only bone vita and milk. Later, you now added some other provision. What you have to offer have increased. The kind of people that will be coming to will increase. Your life depends on what you have to offer. Your relationship will improve because of what you have to offer, not because of what you want to get. It will deteriorate if somebody immediately, somebody know that if I go there now, they will say they don't have food. They will not come to your house. <laughs> You knock their door. Go, go, go. They check from window. You don't come again. I know something has happened. If something did not happen, she can't come here this afternoon. I beg her, they sleep. What you have to offer has to improve. Has to get better. Once it is getting better, either spiritually, materially, or service-wise, your life and the people around you will be getting better. I hope I'm speaking to somebody. People will not just change because you are praying. People will not just change. People are going to change around you 
because they are seeing something else that is attracting them. God will draw men to you. I said, God will draw men to you. Rise up on your feet. Wave your hand to the Father. Bless his name for this morning again. Oh, oh, oh. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody say wonderful things to the name of the Lord. Is the keeper and the sustainer. Our keeper and our sustainer. Give him praise. Give him praise. It's what? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. For our going out and our coming in. For food, for water, for shelter. We give you all the glory. Father, we exalt you. Thank you, Father. 